Anyways, let's get back to the real topic at hand. Why did the story of Shadowlands fail so miserably? And there are way too many reasons, but I would say basically just bad writing. The potential of the expansion was not fulfilled. The expectations of the people was like let down. And I feel like also the expectation was higher because people already had in their mind one good expansion, one bad expansion. And it's like, how can you go? another bad expansion after bfa well listen <laughs> but if we just talk story-wise okay zoval doesn't really make sense as a villain he wasn't built up uh we don't know his motives we don't understand his motives when he spells them out it's like i want to recreate creations like what does that mean it's like i want to enslave everyone what does that mean like what are what will we need to do we will, are we going to be mindless beings or is, is it business as usual and then something happens when we die anyways zoval as a villain doesn't make sense next uh sylvanas in my opinion sylvanas was supposed to be the how would you say it she was like immoral evil bitch that did what was necessary for the horde so she would do uh the stuff that no one else would be willing to assassination infiltration possession the stuff the poison all the shit that you that still happens but it's in the shadow and no one needs to know about it because no one would agree to it morally but it does still happen such as torturing terrorists to find more terrorists look it sucks i think it should happen and uh but they actually have to be terse um then they killed arthas's legacy um what else what else uh night elves they screwed them over a loon messed up the whole story of the shadowlands doesn't make sense because there's definitely more than four categories technically five but there are more than four categories of where people should go after their death and honestly, the the only the, this is the weirdest part. Night elves for some reason all go to um to Ardenwild. Why? No idea. Apparently, there are no righteous or uh, night elves that uh, put the purpose above themselves. Kind of like what happens in Bastion. Go figure. Where is Thrall's dad? If his mom is in the Shallons, where is his dad? Right? How does it work with memory? Is there even a uh, a problem if someone dies at this point can they just can we just go back to the shallons and talk to them who killed you okay well then there are no more secrets in the world right it's like uh, well we need to find the murderer guys let's just go to shallons and that's the guy who killed him fuck it <laughs> there's so many problems with the shallons creation doesn't make sense we don't even know who's the next big bad guy it's Shallons didn't close any chapters. It didn't open any chapters. Are, are there potential storylines you can go from there? Yeah, sure. But as far as like what Shallons provided, if Shallons never happened, it would not matter to anything, basically. Yeah, it's sucked. Yeah. But why? I, I think it goes without saying that Shadowlands, this recent WoW expansion, was not very well received from a story not perspective at all. by the greater World of Warcraft community. And that's kind of strange, isn't it? Considering mm. how much creativity there was in this expansion. Was there? When you think about it, we got to go to these various afterlives. Afterlives about vampires that drink sin like it's wine. This weird blue people and owl people purgatory. Very creative. Undead arenas with magic. Very and creative. Answers nature and such and we just learned more about how the afterlives were created and we learned more about creation itself and how it works in the world of warcraft the more you learn about it the more plot holes that happen there if you th really think about shadowlands the whole structure doesn't make sense let alone how it survived for millennia this creativity there was an absolutely huge amount of community oh, also when people said like the dev said that zoval is a titan level threat plus plus like like there's he's zoval is a sargeras level threat what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> so dumb this expansion people we didn't even get to fight um, Sargeras. That's how powerful he was. 
Meanwhile, we faced a fully powered Zoval with no real external help. <laughs> so dumb. People did not connect even in the slightest with this story and what Blizzard was trying yeah. to tell. But again, why did this happen? Well, in my opinion, I've narrowed it down to two main reasons. Whoa. Two things that I think made the Shadowlands storyline one of the absolute worst stories in World of Warcraft. So to begin, let us discuss point number one. And that is Sylvanas Windrunner. Mm. Sylvanas has been a fan favorite. I really don't think Sylvanas is a main point of why the Shadowlands expansion sucked. Was it a very dumb way of how it played out with her? Yeah, sure. But I would say as far as everything goes, there are way dumber things than Sylvanas in this expansion. Like the Arden Wield Queen character in world of warcraft for years ever since her introduction back in warcraft 3 and she has been at the center of world of warcraft ever since she became the war chief of the horde now you would think that a character like sylvanas a character so beloved by the community for so many years would be a recipe for success for blizzard they put her at the forefront for a time she would lead the story it would be fantastic and yet that's not at all what happened from my personal perspective what blizzard did with sylvanas this will always be in the back of my head of my head when uh, whenever this like Sylvanas becomes the forefront. And honestly, I don't know who to blame for this. Would it be the Me Too movement? Would it be just like Blizzard being woke and shit lately? Lately, last, last five years, six years. Every time they're going to put a female character in the forefront and it feels forced in the back of my mind, I'm always thinking, is it because this is what the story the story they want to tell or is it because they need to tell a story about a female character and put her in the forefront even though sylvanas jaina tyranda they're all beautiful and powerful women you know whatever when you put them in the forefront forcefully like this it always comes down to are they doing this because they're woke or are they doing this because this is the story they wanted to tell all right because i didn't feel like illidan was forced i feel like illidan was a nostalgia thing but you barely got to see illidan throughout legion right yeah he was kind of there but he wasn't like doing anything right but they did use illidan as a major sell point for legion but it, the story wasn't even about him what was legion even about can anyone tell me a main character that Legion was revolving about around? Sargeras, you only saw him at the end. Kill Jaden, you only saw him in the middle. Right? It's like any male dominant character in all of the expansions leading up to BFA and Shadowlands? Not really. I don't I can't think. Ah, uh, maybe Cataclysm Thrall. Eh. Maybe. But it's like it's always in the back of my mind when they force a female character like this, which again I think Sylvanas was a good character and you could easily make a whole expansion around her stuff. But when you force it like that, I don't know. It's in the back of my mind, but I don't know how. I you will never tell. They'll never tell you the reason. Honest is they really tried to push her as this strong female character at the head of the yeah. World of Warcraft story. Uh -huh. But the problem was, Blizzard, despite giving her all these power-ups and giving her these badass lines and stuff, really trying to push that strong female archetype, the biggest mm -hmm. issue with this was the fact that, well, Sylvanas was already a strong female character. Yeah. She didn't need to be in That's what I'm saying. That's why I felt like it was forced. In Warcraft 3, she was a defender of her people, a defender yeah. of Wealth the Lost. She fought against Arthas. She was ultimately killed, raised as a banshee. She broke free of the Lich King. Wasn't her position basically Lorthamar's position? Like outside of the, the king of the uh, High Elves or like the prince of the High Elves, she was the highest, um, what do you call it? The highest, um, wow, authority. Right, she was a ranger general, which is what Lorthamar is, basically. Well, now he's region general, but basically it's the same position. 
things control. And then she rallied together all the survivors of Lordaeron, undead humans, yep. undead mm -hmm. blood elves who had broken mm -hmm. free from the Lich King's control yep. and was leading a rebellion against the Scourge in Lordaeron yep. in order to reclaim the homeland of her people as well yep. as the people of Lordaeron. And yep. yet in the shadows, despite her heroism, Sylvanas bore yep. this sort of grudge against life itself, the life that had rejected her and her people. And so in the shadows of the Apothecarium, Sylvanas and her vile forsaken alchemists were brewing a new plague of undeath that would kill both Scourge and the living alike to make everybody monsters sure. just like they were. And that's it. That's who Sylvanas was in Classic WoW and Warcraft 3. Yeah, she was not a morally good character, but she did it for good reasons, you know? And that's fine as a character. I mean, I'm not saying that's fine like in the legal sense, but it is fine. There's no problem with her as a character doing evil things to achieve good things for her people and even for the Horde. And you know what? It was absolutely fantastic. Yep. It was absolutely beautiful. She was a character that seemed heroic on the surface, and yet deep down, she was evil. She was a villain, and she cared for nobody but herself yep. and her own people. But over the years, Blizzard sort of isolated Sylvanas. She didn't care about the Forsaken anymore. All she cared about were her own goals. And suddenly, she was in league with this 15-foot-tall vampire bodybuilder, and they were trying to destroy all life itself and rewrite the cosmos or something and blah 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 yeah. and it just didn't work sylvanas nope. had always been a character that had operated from the shadows ambushing people when they least expected it working on plagues of exactly undead down in the dark caverns of the undercity this was a character that never should have been brought to the forefront she never should have been war chief she never should have been at the front of a yep. storyline making her the war chief and making her in league with this big 15 foot tall vampire bodybuilder and they're trying to rewrite but even though making her war chief was a legion decision was a bfa decision so i can't even blame the writers of shadlands for that however i don't again even then i don't mind her being war chief Sh should she have been probably not i think lorthamar would have been a better war chief um, however, if their goal was like, we need to have an, a bad evil war chief in order to dismantle the war chief mantle and just make it a war council instead, if that was their main goal, then Sylvanas as a war chief was a good idea, right? But as far as like her being a war chief, I don't think it was like that bad as well. I don't also don't think it connects to Shadowlands that well either. It doesn't matter. ...in the cosmos and stuff, it just doesn't work. It's Blizzard trying to take a strong female character and make her a stronger female character, which didn't work, yeah. and them not understanding who she was as yeah. a character and how her story should have played out. So instead, they just made this some old bullshit up with the Shadowlands, and it fell flat <laughs> on its face. The yep. reality is, unfortunately, when it came to Shadowlands, everything revolved around Sylvanas. And yep. at this point... If you were somebody that just hated Sylvanas as a character, or you were someone like me that loved Sylvanas as a character beforehand, but you felt that Blizzard downgraded her in quality in terms of her writing and character development, then this expansion was just going to suck because it just all revolved around her. And the unfortunate truth is that going into Shadowlands, most people could not stand Sylvanas Windrunner and how Blizzard were developing her as a character. Yep. And because she was at the center of the Shadowlands expansion, nobody liked the storyline because they didn't care about the uh, main character. And now I, wanna I, I don't know. I don't really agree with this point that that is why people didn't like the Shadowlands. I feel like even though this whole scenario was dumb of her beating the lich king i feel like it was it was fine to say that the whole expansion revolved around sylvanas ah i mean honestly aside from like a few cinematics you didn't even think about sylvanas most of the time it's not like that one cinematic in torgas that one cinematic there the one cinematic um in chains of domination but it's like 9.0 you didn't hear anything about Sylvanas aside from the one Torghast uh, cinematic when you do like level 5 for the first time. Aside from that, you didn't hear anything about Sylvanas. It's like, eh, whatever, you know. Uh, so I don't think that's a major reason. I want to talk about the second reason why Shadowlands failed. And this is something that I've hinted at in previous videos and on yeah. Twitch streams. 
But that's just simply the fact that Shadowlands was very strange. It wasn't really yes. an expansion. I would say that's the biggest reason. Pre established World of Warcraft lore, if you think about it. It was kind of a pure shot in the dark sort of expansion. Mm -hmm. We were going to the afterlives, which was a subject that had never been explored before in previous Warcraft. I talked about. We were interacting with people that just didn't really. We didn't know anything about them. We were going to yeah. these lands where vampires were drinking. Sleep. And even though the Nethrius was a fantastic character. Yeah, overall. But he was the only fantastic character. Even characters we knew about. By the way, so many characters we knew about and they were not there. Why? Like wine and meeting people like Sire Denathrius. And this was fine, I guess. But then suddenly you would go from hanging out with a bunch of vampires to suddenly being in purgatory with a bunch of blue people and talking owls. Then suddenly you're in... Okay, first of all, Raven just was the, was the last zone. So first of all, you start with blue people. Uh, then you go to Ardenwild. No, not even. When did you go to Ardenwild? Was Ardenwild second or, or third? Ardenwild was third. Because the second was the Necrolords. Right? Yeah. So. Some nature area with this Alun ripoff lady. And then the next thing you're fighting in like arenas with a bunch of undead and necromancers. Yeah. It was just kind of all over the place. And mm -hmm. then you had this big guy called the Jailer. And he was trying to rewrite reality and rewrite whatever that means to prepare us for what was to come or something. So. He was yeah. actually the good guy or whatever in some weird way of looking at it. Despite a lot of creativity in Shadowlands, the story and the location was lazy. Just say it. The story was lazy. The zones had no connection to one another. The only connection between the zones was literally Necrolords and Bastion. And Maldraxxus and Bastion because the Maldraxxians invaded Bastion. Even though their job is to defend the Shadowlands, somehow they want to attack Shadowlands and whatever yeah there was a whole plot they all side with the jailer decide to attack uh bastion whatever i don't know it's it's dumb as fuck it all felt very random and although they were connected sort of it all felt very well disconnected but overall yeah. i think the worst sin that blizzard committed like like mm. the worst sin mm. got people just riled mm -hmm. up was when blizzard decided to touch world of warcraft's most famous character beloved Artist by the way King. yeah and they tried to paint it like zoval this jailer guy was behind the lich yeah. king he was actually his creator he's more powerful than the lich king the lich king was just a pawn in his mm -hmm. scheme everything was just a pawn in his great plan and everything that had happened so far had been orchestrated by him I really hate how Taliesin defended this scene because like what Jaina didn't say anything Uther didn't really say anything it was all like a monologue by Sylvanas and I was like bro what are you talking about it's like well Jaina had her story already told and how she dealt with the Ast Arthas aftermath and Uther his whole bastion thing was about how he deals with the Arthas aftermath yeah it's different when they deal with it but it's like can't they say something, anything, instead of just staring at it? Like Uther being like, I forgive you for what you've done or some shit like that. Jaina saying, sorry, I couldn't be there for you, knowing you needed me the most or some shit like that. No, absolutely nothing. Because why? Because Arthas is toxic masculinity in World of Warcraft 3 or some shit. Then the only one who had a speech there is Sylvanas, who, by the way, yeah, turned to the Lich King. No one could relate to her at that point, as if it was a sad thing. And the only interesting thing she said was uh, something about, like, that the trees will no longer whisper his name, because that's basically what his dad says. When you were born, the trees or whatever, the forest whispered your name, Arthas, whatever. Like, wow, good job, guys. You made it relate to something. This sort of crap never works. The yep. only time this sort of storytelling works is when you can genuinely look back over like the years or over the course of the story and be like, oh, and you can see the clues mm -hmm. like 
You can see people all the way back in Classic WoW saying, ah, yes, one day you shall all know the pains of his prisons or something. And, and it yeah. all just kind of yeah. builds up until you say, oh, here's the guy that everybody's been talking about over the years. But yeah, basically how they did Sargeras. Because they built Sargeras without you ever knowing anything about Sargeras, aside from the shit that's like he is the main bad guy of the Legion. That's all you knew. He's the one who's the destroyer of worlds, but you never get to see him. But he was built up. So when he appeared, you're like, oh shit, that's Sargeras. And was very disappointing because we never got a chance to fight him. Here's the thing. Nobody since Warcraft 3 ever mentioned some big nope. ass guy named nothing. Jailer. There was no references to this character. There was nothing. All yep. the events of Warcraft 3 and in World of Warcraft were not a part of this dumbass's plan. Of course it wasn't. It's ridiculous that they even put that forward. I'm getting passionate about it just talking about yep. it. And you can see what I'm talking about. People hate this sort of storytelling because it came out of nowhere. And it spit upon the previous stories that had been told. Yep. And the characters that had been told. Saying, yep. oh, hey, you know those like characters that you know and love from back in the day? Well, they were just puppets on the string of this really cool <laughs> character that we developed. His name's Zobal, and he's badass. Guess what? He's not. No one likes him. Get rid of him. And I'm glad that we did. Shadowlands failed mostly because... Also, by the way... Having two Valkyries being able to kidnap Anduin, that is so weak. <laughs> so weak. Of those two reasons. Nobody likes Sylvanas, and Sylvanas was the center of the expansion, and so no I don't think I don't think nobody likes Sylvanas. Pl there were plenty of Sylvanas loyalists who were actually loyalists. Nobody cared about her choices. People just wanted to kill her. Collect Not her really. and make her go away. And then the other thing was just how... Yes, I would agree that to make her go away became the majority rule, mostly because they were tired of her character being run through the mud. So they're like, fuck it, let's just kill her, get it over with, and move on with our lives. Random and disconnected everything felt in Shadowlands, yep. from the zones and the locations to the story to even the main villain. And despite Blizzard trying to create a sort of connectivity with like the rest of the world and its storyline trying to say things like yeah. the jailer was behind it all, it just didn't work. It fell flat on its face. Oh, don't forget that the whole like Zoval connecting the creation to Azeroth somehow, we still don't know, understand anything about that. Also, how come the Forge of Souls are still active? Why it wasn't it dismantled and destroyed? It's not like the Lich King, um, Bolvar, who was there, didn't know what they're for. It's like, all this shit's like, bro, like, you're coming up with nonsense at this point. You can't connect the dots at all. So, that's why I think the story of Shadowlands failed, but I will say that I think that the story of Dragonflight is looking a lot more interesting. <laughs> What story? What story of Dragonflight is actually looking interesting to you? I wonder. In fact, tremendously more interesting oh, for God. several reasons. Okay, first of all, very low bar to compare to. It's like, oh, this story is tremendously more interesting than a, ch a children's book. Yeah, no shit, but it's a very low bar to compare it to, you know? And second of all, what story of Dragonflight do you think is very interesting that you are confident they will not fuck up. Nosdormu, 100% gonna be a fuck up. We Everyone knows this. Like, the whole plot of Nosdormu turning into Morizond is kind of null and void because the old gods are gone, but he's still Nosdormu. So, you know, how about Ysera coming back to life? Because that doesn't make any fucking sense. Why would you even need to bring her back to life? Let her stay in fucking Ardenweald. Her daughter can be the fucking new aspect. Right? Uh... There's three black dragons. Who cares who's going to be the leader of the black dragon flight? There are no more dragons. Like, who gives a shit? Uh, what else is there? Tascar, whatever. Who cares? Except Talies, and I don't think anyone really cares about Tascar. Um, what else is there story-wise? Nothing. And here's even the biggest problem. Who could even be the next villain we focus on after we beat death? What does it even matter if a character dies now? And so it's like, 
how come that if Nosdormu if uh, Nosdormu is going to die, how come he won't go to Ardenweald? Or to anywhere in the Shadowlands? Well, how come Yazir gets to go to Ardenweald? By the way, actually, no, that's fine. She went after uh, the deal, sure. Uh, but, like, the other dragons won't. Where's Deathwing in this? When he died, where did he go? Did he go to the Void Death Zone? Or did he go to the Shadowlands? How about other dragons? Oh, yeah, there's also the whole story of, like, somehow uh, resurrecting uh, the, the big-ass dragon. Fuck, forgot his name. Just like... Okay, whatever, sure. Even though I believe you need a soul for that, and... Uh, Again, is it going to be a shit show? Yes. Is the story going to be good? Probably not. Let's be real. Anyone who's confident or like his hope. All these creators, I'm telling you right now, man, so much fucking hopium and copium. It's like you don't learn from the past. These are the same writers who wrote BFA and Shadowlands. And you can't be like, well, that was a first yabi. Like, give me a break. Persiabi probably was already like on notice about the allegations because the investigation was going on since, since 2016. So he probably were like, they were probably already like, let's not let this guy do too much. You know, we're gonna have to get rid of him sooner or later. But I'm gonna talk about that in another video at a later time. For most of us yeah. though, we've all quit Shadowlands and we're all playing Wrath of the Lich King. But for those people nope. that are not playing Wrath of the Lich King because maybe you don't understand why Wrath of the Lich King is so significant. It's significant, but that's all it is. It was significant. Are those of you that have never played Wrath of the Lich King before and you don't know the history of the expansion and why so many people are hyped for? I never, this is like a, a self-promote. Uh, uh. I don't, know, I don't know why, I just don't like people self-promoting for some reason. <laughs> Anyways, that's the video, that's the reaction. Uh, I don't know, I think like Sylvanas didn't play the biggest part in why Shadowlands sucked, story sucked. I think Shadowlands story just sucked because it sucked. And every bad decision they could make with the story, they made. Anyways, that's it. See you on the next one. Peace.